हम अपने मन को हमेशा संतुलित रखना है इसी में ही हमारा आत्मविकास समाया है हम अपने मन को हमेशा संतुलित रखना है इसी में ही हमारा आत्मविकास समाया है हमें अपने मन को हमेशा संतुलित रखना है इसी में ही हमारा आत्मविकास समाया है आत्मविकास समाया है आत्मविकास समाया है हरिओम तत्सत जय गुरुदेव नमस्ते एवरीबॉडी नमस्ते फातिमा नमस्ते सर सो टुडे टॉपिक इज रिलैक्सेशन रिलैक्सेशन सो सो आर ऑल द यूनिक टेक्निक्स व्हिच वर पायनियर्ड बाय आर फाउंडर श्री योगेंद्र जी ऑफ द योगा इंस्टीट्यूट सो द फर्स्ट टेक्निक we'll start with the conditioning conditioning is a technique actually it's a basically it's a tuning of mind and body okay so before you start anything like before any uh, you know when you see any concert or any mafil or a big program is there so all the musicians they what they do they tune their equipments okay they tune their instruments so even it is not only for the this thing if you see the sprinters before they go for the run what they do they condition they just sit and then they go okay so conditioning is a very important thing as a sadhak yes we are all sadhak so before we start anything we just condition that okay what we are going to do so it's basically it's a revising what we are going to do we should ask that why i am doing this because it should be practiced with the dharma bhav okay because if you are clear that why then only you can excel in that thing so if you condition the results will be better normally see if the basically if there is a you no know, water bottle and if you want to steady the water inside the bottle what you have to do you have to first keep the bottle steady then slowly 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 the water inside gets settled down so first requisite of the conditioning that you have to sit stand or any you know, suitable posture for you okay because i know this program uh, so many people are watching so they are not uh, your practicing uh, no they are not sadhak so for them if you are not comfortable sitting on the floor you can sit in chair so important thing is a posture if the posture is not comfortable then you can't condition because it's a bringing the thought process down clear yeah. but if you are not comfortable if the legs are paining the back is not comfortable and you focus keep focusing on your body so you yes. can't relax so all these techniques basically are the relaxing technique so first we'll start with the conditioning mm-hmm. so it's such a simple thing it very it looks like a very simple thing but it's very effective you'll come to know when we start conditioning so sit in any meditative posture padmasan sukhasan vajrasan if you are practicing yog otherwise comfortable posture where back should be straight ideally if you don't have any conditions okay chin should be parallel to the ground okay and then just close your eyes and watch your breath if you are not comfortable with the eyes closed you can keep your eyes open but be focus okay just forget everything just just focus last time like you did the tratak with the uh, fatima so like that you just keep your eyes focused and watch your breath just breathe normal do not control your breath feel your breath those who have those who don't have any condition any back problem or just try to keep the back straight chin up just watch your breath do not control
just feel the breath relax your face relax your eyes there is no tension in the body we practice this with the dharma bhav duty sense so first thing you should ask yourself why i am doing this why i am doing this bring your attention back to your breath just feel your breath be aware of your breath it's a very first rule of your conditioning get awareness of your breath if you are aware of your breath then you are aware of your thoughts and once you get the awareness of your thought then you can direct your thoughts rather than controlling them again check the posture back straight chin up feel your breath just be aware of your breath now you can feel that calmness that stillness now your breath is slowly slowly deepening feel your breath back straight chin up feel your breath very slowly open your eyes and relax comfortable
<laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. So this was the conditioning. Okay, just feel, feel, feel that now once you get established in this, the next technique is a reflection. Reflection is a technique. Actually, it is practiced at the end of the day yes. normally. But yes, you should know that what is it. So very simple thing. Reflection is a very simple thing initially. So what you have to do, you have to just write down the your day. Like you got up, had tea, breakfast, workout, whatever. And you should go in a chronological order, one after one. One important rule, if you forget something, don't go back. Okay. Yeah. So it is just getting up and just writing down the things in black and white. I'll tell you why. As a sadhak, we need these things to write down the things, jot it, because we are not supercomputer. We think that we are, we are not. And we think, I remember everything, but then it doesn't happen like that. So always write it down. So you know that it is written. It is marked there. So in very simple thing, you just write it down, whatever you did in the day. Clear? Now, here we do this, okay, with the Anitya Bhavana. What is Anitya Bhavana? Everything is transitory. Okay, what was in the morning, not in the afternoon, what is in the afternoon, not in the evening, not what is in the evening, not in the night. So everything is changing. Okay, so that's why you just see your day, it's change, 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 change. Our problem is we don't accept the change. The problem is we don't accept the change. Okay, uh, one of our teacher, one day she told in the class that whatever gives you pleasure, gives you pain. pain whatever gives you pleasure gives you pain and it's right okay we want to be happy forever is it possible no no so that's why you have to accept the change so this anitya bhavana everything is changing okay we hold so many things now so start changing start changing okay if you want to be a better person start changing yourself we try to change everyone else around it doesn't happen Okay, it's like, you know, flowing against the current. What you do when you flow against the current, you get tired and you drop. Rather, turn your back, just flow with the current and you get the shore. Okay, so it is just sitting in the night. That can be practiced in a Vajrasana. Vajrasan. So reflection can be practiced in a Vajrasana. Okay, so why? Because after meal, we do this. At end of the day, when you go to the bed, so it is only asan is advised after your meal is vajrasan where it helps us to for the digestion. So in this we sit and we just focus. Okay. So just sit. Now today we are not at the end of the day, but still just go through the sequence of the events. And I'll tell you what is the significance of this after you just, just go. Just go. We do it for two to three minutes. We'll not do more. And then I'll give the explanation why we are doing this. Okay. So again, if you don't have any conditions when you sit in Vajrasana, sit tall. Just again, watch your breath and start collecting your day. From the morning you get got up. Just continue. Just skip something, don't go back.
Okay. Now, this was a technique like, yeah, so you start writing down. Then what is the important thing, initially first few days, you just keep writing the sequence. Then you'll have to take the you know, inventory, emotional inventory. Then first you just know that I have, I, this was my day, but then you start taking inventory like I was disturbed, I flared up, I did something. So start taking that emotional inventory and go to the root cause. That is very important. Why? Why I got disturbed? Why I was angry? Okay. And then when you start analyzing and it, it has to be done with that, you know, Sakshi Bhava. That is very important. Sakshi Bhava is a witness like identity as a third person. Otherwise, what we do? No, no, I was right. That Fatima said something, I was right. So, but Fatima said something. Okay. So why I should get flared up. So it is me. So that's what I said, Sakshi Bhav. Sakshi Bhav is an excellent technique, okay? It's a witness-like attitude. Sakshi Bhav is a witness-like attitude. You have to maintain the distance, especially when it comes to the relations, like, you know, spouse, children, okay? So that time it is very important to practice Sakshi Bhav. So like, it's a, it's a very simple example. If there is a hot cup of tea and I ask you to put your finger in that, will you put it? No. no. Why? Because you know, if I put it, it will hurt me. Okay. But when it comes to the relation, we do that again and again. We forget. We forget last time, you know, but then we do again. And so especially with the kids, with the children, our, okay, we just saw this thing. Dr. Sab used to give an excellent example for a Sakshi Bhav. Like you're traveling in your car and you just see a, a, someone is getting married and then Bara Dari hai, you just smile. You you just be happy like, okay, someone is getting married. Okay. Okay. Again, after some time, you see someone, you know, the death procession is going on. Janaza is coming. So you just do this, pray for that. And then, but then he used to say that first time when the procession was there, Bara Jareti, did you get down from your car and join that? No. Because it was not someone from, you know, there is no identification. It was not related to you. The same thing at the time. You don't go down and start crying because that's an identification. So Sakshi Bhav, like you can't read like this or you can't read like this. So there is a, dip. always there is a midway. midway distance. Like when you want to read, you hold the book like this. So that like very, you know, is to give so uh, excellent examples, which was, you know, you can relate with those examples. Yeah, like, you know, you can't like. read like this, you can't read like that. That's it. Sakshi Bhav, Menton. So this has to be done, reflection, that emotional inventory has to be done with the Sakshi Bhav. Okay. So don't engage your ego in that. You just go through this and you'll come to know. And you used to say 98%, okay, you'll find that root cause. is ourselves. Because it is our ego. It is our ego. Very two, you know, two percent like someone came and hit you accident or something, but otherwise, whenever you're disturbed, it is because of my ego. Yeah. So it's a reflection really helps you to come out of your that vairagya. If you want to really develop the vairagya, first thing you'll have to surrender your ego. So the next technique in this now is a nishpanda bhav. Okay. So the word nishpanda means just absence of that moment. We all know that untrained mind causes lots and lots of problems. So a still body is really needed, which leads to a still mind. Now for that, we need some kind of training for this mind. So there is this technique known as Nishpand Bhav, wherein it actually helps you know to create just now what we were saying about the witness-like attitude, a witness-like bystander-like attitude towards this life. A uh, kind of creating detachment. There's a level of detachment which we gain through this uh, technique. And detachment is, mind you, not in action. Because in today's life, people keep on telling detachment, matlab, sab chhod diya. no, it's not in action at all. Detachment means being in a balanced state in midst of all these chaos, what we are going through. And this actually helps you to face the challenges of our day-to-day -day life 
and we even perform our duties with much more ease. So that's why this unique technique, Nishpand Bhav, wherein we just concentrating in uh, around one sense of perception that is hearing. We have five senses of perception, rest four senses are shut, and we just using one sense of perception that is hearing, sound. So all that energy is just listening to a sound. Actually, this technique, you know, our founder, it is, it is a gift from the founder, okay, from the Yoga Institute. Because our institute is uh, situated near runway, airport. The airport is very close and the, all the aeroplanes keep flying over the our institute, okay. And just now this, uh, all uh, aircrafts are very sophisticated. The noise pollution is very low, but you imagine 100 years back and when the runway started, that it was really terrible thing. So every time when you're sitting for conditioning, we're sitting for the meditation, okay? Then that time, then and then people used to get disturbed because of that. So every time they used to, they started complaining, what is this? We can't concentrate, we can't focus. So then founder said, why not to take advantage of this sound? Okay, see, that's a, you know, so this, all these yogis, no, they find out a way in any in adverse condition. So annoying, so disturbing, but then such, okay, hold this because this too shall pass. Again, it's with the Anitya Bhavana. That plane will never stay there. It will come, 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 come and go. Maybe again it will come and go. So that's that's a technique, okay, excellent technique where, so that's why when you practice this, very dominating sound, you have to focus on that and that will pass. Yeah. And and this is so true in today's life. That time it was aeroplane and today when we are traveling, the traffic, the honking, okay. that is a big, you know, there's so much frustration and anger because of that. So instead of doing that frustration and anger, why not use it in our favor? As it is, we can't do anything during that time. It's not feasible to read or, you know, we just, yeah. yeah, it's not, it's not good for eyes. So better off, why don't we use that sound, sound to go into a sense of balance meditation? So that is how it actually helps in today's life. The only thing is we're not driving at that time. Yeah. We shouldn't drive and do the <laughs> yeah. finish. Wow, okay. so, but it really helps us. It really helps us. Okay. Now, very important thing, when you close your eyes, your all other senses are like that. Okay. So it is done with the eyes closed, sitting. Yeah. Yep. So how we do this? Okay. So you do it? Okay. So we just see how we do it. We sit with the back support completely against the wall. So kind of you're leaning towards the wall. Your shoulders and your head is resting on the wall. Your legs are stretched out, keeping around two to three feet distance. <clears throat> Palms are gently pressed on your upper thighs, facing the ceiling. Gently close your eyes. Now in this posture too, important point is comfort. Rather than just focusing on your posture, it's important that you completely concentrate on the comfort because this completely minimizes your distractions. If you keep on changing that posture again and again, it doesn't work in your favor. Fine. And now for initial stage, we just try and concentrate on our breath. For first few seconds or for first few minutes, it depends on the maturity of your practice. We concentrating on our breath. Now slowly from here, we try and concentrate on any sound which is continuous and feeble. Any sound around you? Now this sound could be anything. If you are in our household, in our homes, we, it could be something of the birds chirping around near the windows. 
someone talking in a house, anything, but try that it is continuous. So just concentrate. And one sound is completed, again, take it back to some other sound. An important point over here is no emotions coming in between those sounds. So if you listen to something, you're not trying to connect yourself with any of the emotions. You're not feeling, okay, yes, when I heard this, this was what had happened. No, it's only and only the sound. So only the sense of your hearing is active, no other senses. If you are in your house, especially in this COVID times, we all are in a house, stranded in a house. So the cooking sound is very much audible. So be aware that it's only the cooking sound. You're not attaching other sense of smell to it because it's very easy to attach that sense of smelling to it. Just try and avoid it. It's only plain cooking sound and you're not trying to analyze what is being cooked. How is it going to be? What am I going to have for my lunch or dinner? No, it's just plain sound what you're trying to concentrate on. Now slowly from there, we try to bring our attention back on our breath. And gently open your eyes. From the table. Yeah. Okay, so Nishpant Bhav, it actually, you know, it's like within fractions of seconds or minutes, you are right there, kind of even your conditioning done and you're ready to perform whatever next you want to do, you're all by yourself. It's kind of cut off from that inner world and outer world and that, you know, sense of gratification, that peace, you can see actually on his face the moment he was out of it. So that's what it is all about. Sometimes things need not be explained. You don't need words. It's seen on your student's face or whoever is performing in front of you, right? Very important thing that uh, don't play any music or something, which is, you know, your. so it's very important to just to listen to natural sounds around you. It's very yes. important. Otherwise, you'll do it with it because <laughs> then you get along. You know that sometimes, you know, music, you know the tune, you know the words. So you get again attached. So that's rightly she said that you're not getting attached to that sound, which, which is coming. And one thing uh, it's actually I, I called sometimes names like Ajay, Shweta, don't rub your palm because normally I've seen people doing that. OK, so what is it? Let's like, just do this. So, uh, so whenever you're getting her, uh, so this actually Hansama always says this what rubbing. Yes. This is not required after all these techniques in Mumbai because there is already heat. So when you rub and then what second thing happens in this, when you rub, it is disturbing the state of your mind. Yes, it is required in Rushikesh, Nainital, where you in the ashram, it's absolutely chill there. And then after Shavasana or after practice, you really. So then Hansama always says there is a, you just put the palms together, put the palms together in Namaste. Yes, and if you want, you just place the cupping or rubbing. That's it. Cupping or palming. Okay, so instead of rubbing your palms, you can do this practice after your all these techniques or when you end your shavasana, end your meditation, when you end your pranayam. Clear? So I randomly, I just when we go online, I just call and then this. Say, How come sir know that I rub the palm? But it's joke. Okay, so <laughs> so the next technique is uh, very effective. It is called Pratipaksha Bhavana. Pratipaksha Bhavana. There is Sutra 2 by 33. Those who know the Yoga Sutras, Vitarka Badhane Pratipaksha Bhavanam. 
Vitarga, all the deceiving thoughts, deceiving. okay, evil thoughts, okay, bad and even is they start you disturbing, you have to practice Pratipaksha Bhavana. See, uh, and that's not sometimes that cartoon really helps that, you know, that Mickey Mouse and all this, there is one, you no know, one evil and devil, where is all um, this. Yes. Okay, so that, 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 whenever the such thoughts comes, okay, Whenever is that all these evil thoughts start disturbing you, you have to practice the opposite. Now, it is very difficult to practice that, I know. Very difficult to practice this Pratipaksha Bhavana. So, it is just, you know, you have to, if you, if you get angry or if you start hating someone, to have to just uh, practice love, okay? So, it it uh, very difficult to explain. But I'll give the simple example, like if you have... It is in simple words, start praying for the enemy. I'm not saying actually enemy or this thing. If someone, you see someone and you get disturbed and you get agitated, so you one thing, immediately you start praying for that person. Yes. True. You pray for that person. Maybe that you call that person sick or something, but you start praying for that person. So what is happening? The first thing, you are not losing your peace of mind. Okay. When you start praying. And the second thing, with the vibrations of your prayer, maybe that person changes. Yes. Right now, just when we, uh, I, I recollect one uh, the thing incident that one of our senior teacher, she uh, one day she told me that my neighbors every time when we came across like collecting milk or collecting paper in the morning, she slams the door on my face, and I ask her what you do. So she, I also slam the door, and then it's okay. No, then I got disturbed. That's what I said. She slammed the door on your face. So why you have to slam and you get disturbed? She's a sick person. That person is a sick. So next time when you come to her like this, you just smile at her. Say good morning. We sure. Said no, I can't. I said try. Try. And then after some day she met me and said, sir, at least she stopped slamming the door. I said maybe she one day she'll also smile and say good morning. I don't know. After that, I don't I get that. <laughs> this thing but it works it really works okay so pratipaksha bhavana is all this replacing the opposite thoughts so for that what we'll do now you just write down the 10 positive points throughout the day it may be a very simple thing okay you had a nice tea in the morning whatever 10 positive points 10 positive points so just sit in any meditative posture and just Instead of writing down, if you have any writing pad, you can write it down or just collect the 10 positive points. Okay. So try that. And I'm, to, I'm going to ask you what are the 10 positive points. Okay. So I should know that. Okay. So. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's so difficult. <laughs> Believe me, uh, it's really difficult to think about Paul because that negativity is so much there within yeah. us. It's yes. it's really yes. difficult yes. to yes. you know jot down those positive positive points. Yes, See, it is. It's a very easy, simple thing. When you get, I up, could barely went... reach to six, seven. I guess. See, I'll give you now the positive points. When you went in the morning, you took balcony. You just saw that nice sky. Okay, you saw birds singing. Okay, you smell some good. Someone is making breakfast. Yeah, then you can smell a tea if you are a tea lover. Okay, so so many flowers, so many so many positive things are around. Very first positive point. I got up in the morning. I'm blessed today. I have the whole day in front of me. 
are we thankful for that yes we should be at least the first positive point that i open my eyes that's why wow i am alive alive mai aaj zinda hu okay that's the first positive point that then uske baad sab na agar aankh khuli nahi to see actually that's what whenever we come as a faith when it come to the faith if someone tells you today or tomorrow morning you're not going to open your eyes can you sleep no <laughs> If I tell you that tomorrow morning you won't open your eyes, you can't sleep. We have faith that tomorrow I'll get up in the morning. That's why I can sleep. I surrender my ego. I surrender myself. But I, we don't accept that. I say I got up in the morning. It doesn't happen with everyone. We have lost so many dear ones in the sleep also. Okay, but still we say no. That's why the first positive point I got up. Okay, I got up. I brushed. I'm intact. All my limbs and everything is intact. I can see. I can smell. I can do. I can. All these so many positive points are there. But what we do? We think, like she said, only six or seven. Six, seven years. Barely and I could reach there. That? Let me know. Yes, yeah, so it was actually I could relate it to. Uh, you know, there was some work going around in my house. So yeah. it's going in different room. But then there was some fitting to be made in the room which we are staying right now. So he came. He did it. and now it was like who's going to brew who's going to sweep the floor <laughs> so the thing is now because of this lockdown the yes. in indian culture the men are not trained to do household work ah, but no, this no. covid <laughs> exceptions are the exception <laughs> yeah so this covid times has made people learn all these things so my brother was more than willing to go along okay. and just sweep it and he did an excellent job so i was like wow there's something to thank because of this covid he knows how to sweep he knows how to wash the utensils though he has not learned cooking all indian moms yes. <laughs> train your train your okay. yes so th- this is something which i'm like wow and right now believe me i was just pondering on that thought and instead of uh, thinking of today's i went back into those covid times those lockdown period the there were many positive things actually which came along yeah. we uh, you know kind of atmanirbhar what modi ji keeps on telling atmanirbhar hum log sachchi atmanirbhar yeah so we have become <laughs> that we are not any more dependent on the mails if they say that i'm not going to come for do okay. din theek hai koi baat nahi do din we ke baad aaoge na like we are more than happy that at least she is going to come after two days yes. yeah so this we were not used to so these are the positive points actually which needs to ponder and there are many such which have come up in these actually, days actually here i'll no the doctors have always there is a two words acceptance and tolerance exactly as two sides acceptance and tolerance he used to say he actually doctor sir used to say very few words and the two words but it is so much impact in my lifestyle that acceptance and tolerance like r- rightly she said that she accepted and the tolerance level goes high then only she can yes. say acha theek hai do din nahi aayegi na do din ke baad aayegi na you more than happy for that <laughs> see that's what all this thing you now especially what we are going through this all these techniques are really going to help us okay it's it's really going to help us because you know stress level is so high nowadays stress level is so high okay so and that Agitation. We are all are standing at the age of no. Just, just slowly, slowly. So now the next is uh, in this now. We'll call uh, do. It is yoni mudra. Yoni mudra. It's a yogendra yoni mudra. Okay. This is uh, we sit and then we'll practice. Here, your uh, yoni is like a Brahma yoni. Okay? Yeah. And we are shutting all the senses. Okay. only thing those who are suffering from a depression they will not practice this you can just sit instead of closing eyes and just watch and just watch your breath those who are comfortable first you have to close your ears but don't press them hard okay then eyelashes bridge of the nose upper lip lower lip okay so this is if you are not comfortable with the arms up you can drop the hands down yes if you have frozen shoulders or something so you can drop the hands in front but try to keep the back straight and now just stay there just stay there don't exert the pressure don't do or uh, don't press hard it is just okay it's like a pratyahara withdrawal of senses it's like a tortoise withdrawing 
all the limbs in whenever there is a you know when the tortoise is uh, realizes there's some uh, like threat or something the same thing we have to withdraw our senses just withdraw your senses <clears throat> very effective technique so you'll see that most of the temples we have the tortoise as a symbol of a pratyahara so when you go to the god your higher reality first you'll have to withdraw your senses you have to withdraw your ego and then offer yourself to the higher reality If you find it difficult keeping arms up, you can drop the hands in front and stay there. Slowly take the hands down. And relax. So, you want to say something on your new Maria experience? <clears throat> it's like uh, these five fingers are kind of, you're actually denoting the five sense of perceptions what we have eyes, nose, ears, <clears throat> taste, and your touch feeling sense so those five senses with these five fingers we're trying to curb them so you're just moving inside when you do these you're moving because the only connection with this outer world mainly yeah. is these are these senses we're so much attached to it so basically your all day to day day to day activities are governed by these senses are completely governed what they want what your eyes want that you see what you want to smell, you move in that direction. What you want to eat, how you want to feel, it's all about that. So the moment if you can curb them, then you are like, I feel you are king or queen of this world. You're all by yourself. You're completely in. And that is actually the time when you can understand what that real you is. Understanding that real self is by looking inwards rather than looking in the mirror because it doesn't give you, it's just a perception, it's a false image what you see in the mirror it's not you the real you is within in so actually yes. we are driven we are we are controlled by our senses yeah completely it should be opposite okay it should be opposite that we are controlled by our senses and that's why we leave for the senses and that's why we are in trouble okay exactly. we like when we look at the food and then we say mm. see we look we smell and then yeah it shouldn't happen the food anna, anna parabrahma eat it what is come in front of you have to eat it exactly. but we do opposite we just if it is presentable if it is tasty then only we eat otherwise we say it's the same thing eyes you know every everything you want to just everything should be like you know lovey dovey yes, with our senses. everything should be perfect, perfect the way you yes with the way you look everything but it's not like that so we're drawing the senses so first this technique will you go will give you that awareness of the senses and then only you can withdraw if you're not aware, you can't withdraw or you can't control. So control is for me and it's a very hard thing to control the thoughts, control the senses because no. But if you're aware of all these things, at least you can withdraw them. You can regulate them. You can direct them in a proper direction. Proper direction. Okay. Energy also. Whenever your energy, if you're aware of that, then only you can direct the energy in a proper way. Okay. Actually, basically, we are full of negativity that all this tamas inertia so all these techniques will take you to the sattva the practices which are doing with the rajas and it will take us to sattva so next uh, is uh, now yogendra life. yogendra life. it's a very excellent technique very higher practice again in this also that uh, yes limitation. there's limitation for uh, people with severe depression will not do it will would avoid it they can just sit but without closing their eyes, right. just sit as you are and you can just feel your breath. So basically, if we 
understand what yogendra lay is laya means absorption and right from the time of uh, buddha to patanjali till the modern times we have been known that there is a strong sense of connection between your breathing pattern that is your respiratory pattern and your thinking pattern so if we just recollect your breath becomes very much rapid and irrhythmic when you are angry or you are frustrated you know excited yes it becomes very rhythmic and it becomes really slow when you're deeply engrossed in any thinking so obviously it's very obvious thing that your mind can completely your thoughts are affected by your breathing pattern so in this yogendra lay kind of a psychophysical process we try and curb our senses that is this mind this mind is given some job to be done and what is that job we try to do it we show the technique fine so you just sit in any meditative posture of your choice it could be a sukhasan vajrasan padmasan and if nothing you can always sit on a chair make yourself comfortable completely at ease back straight chin parallel and you gently close your eyes now in this what is important is you just trying to concentrate on the air coming in through your nostrils and the air going out to your, through your nostrils so this would be the initial phase of yogendra lay so for initial 2 to 3 minutes this is the only thing what you are going to concentrate on the cool air coming in through your nostrils and the warm air going out of your nostrils now slowly once you feel yes you have got a knack of it the important part of yogendra lay is about concentrating on the friction which is created while this air is entering and going out and that friction has to be felt right here underneath your tip of the nose this set this is where you start feeling the friction of the air coming in and going out near the nostrils so your entire attention your concentration is over here your mind has been given a job of concentrating on this particular area about the friction and be careful your mouth is closed and you resting your tongue on the upper palate this is the upper palate so you resting your tongue on the upper palate now this can be done easily for 15 minutes or more than 15 minutes because actually the real effects what you get from yogendra lay is after doing it more than 15 minutes but since we don't have so much time right now we are time bound so we would try and cut it out away here so if you find you can gently open your eyes better Yeah. okay so basically in this what happens after a few minutes your attention initially yes you were concentrating on that friction after a few minutes that completely attention is taken off from from that breathing and you actually lose that sense of even having that body within you you kind of there's a feeling of expansion what is happening you completely unaware of that surrounding it's just you are lost somewhere you you know from that micro you become macro kind of thing enlargement what we call yeah this is what happens but for that you need to sit for more than 15 minutes and that's why it's one of a very higher techniques and it is one of the best form of meditation what 
one can do. So that's why people with depression are recommended not to do it till you have just recovered from it. And it's, yes, one of, you know, beautiful experience, the sensation, what you get after that, it's a very pleasant feeling. You really feel that I don't want to come out of it. In fact, you can go for an hour or so with yes. it, believe me. It's a, it's a really higher technique and yes. then do, do not overdo it initially, okay? Do it as for your own comfort. Actually, when you're saying that air feel coming in and going yes. out at hot air, okay? That I remember that it was like, you know, one of our teacher, he was a very funny, he used to give very funny example. And then one day he said that some something was going on, like, you know, this thing and he said, you know, that Hindi film was like, it's romantic, all this thing. He said, it's only CO2, you know. And then we started laughing. So yeah. We never thought that. He said, what is CO2 and CO2? Oh, it's very warm. So that's what, the, it's a joke. But then you know, sometimes you, some teachers uh, and that impression is lifelong. Like, yes. we, we never thought that it is CO2. Yeah, it's CO2. So it's basically the perception of mind. mind. <laughs> How you are trained, that is what. See, we are yogic people. We are yogic sadhaks. So now next so time when they see it in the, yeah. romantic scene, they will, uh, they will start laughing. It is CO2. It is CO2. Yeah. Okay. So now what we'll do, the most difficult thing is a shavasan. It's a asan, shavasan. Why I'm saying it's most difficult? Because it's a conscious relaxation. You have to practice with the vairagya bhav. I'm not the body. It will take time to develop that attitude towards your body, okay? Towards oneself. That just And that word is surrender, surrender, and surrender. Don't hold it. Let go. That's what I said. It's a very difficult asan when it comes to the practice. We can push you. You can stretch you. You can do so many things with the body. But when it comes to the mind, we have to relax. And it is a very effective technique, especially now those who are at uh, you know, home and working. And the, actually, it is happening opposite that people are working more than they used to work in the office. So if you master this technique, it is really going to help you because it's 8 to 10 minutes of Shavasana is you know equivalent to hours of your sleep. Because there is no thought. When you sleep also, you keep in the thought process is on. So your mind is on. So you rather, can, uh, rather than getting your fresh... Most of the time you get tired, you know, means you keep thinking. So if you master this technique, Shavasan, it's an excellent thing. For that, what we do, we have to lie down. So now we'll just demonstrate the various uh, asanas for Shavasan. Okay. So first thing, the very first basic thing like that, you lie down with your legs straight. Palms facing upward. Okay, relax your toes. So this is one thing, one posture for Shavasan. If you're not comfortable, then you can fold the legs into pranam number four like this. Okay. Or you can do Supta Bhadrasan, like putting toes together, knees apart. This is a very, 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 very relaxing and effective technique, especially for the ladies. At the end of the day, you just lie down in this. Bhadrasan, some uh, institute call them Baddakonasan. Or you can lie down on your side in Drudhasan. Okay, in when you practice Shavasan in Drudhasan, your knees are folded. Okay, or the next one is <clears throat> on your abdomen in Makarasan, crocodile pose. Toes together, heels apart. Or you can do Matsya Krita. So normally we do this before we get up in the morning. Most of us, you know, we just lie down for that. Especially when we switch off the alarm. And then two, three, five minutes, we just want to buy that happiness. So we, am I right? Okay, so shala. now you choose your asan. Okay, water is comfortable important thing next few minutes you're not going to move your body that's very important okay i'm not the body <clears throat> and rather than focusing or concentrating just relax as i mentioned the part of your body just let go let go let go <clears throat> ready we we'll start with our toes i relax my toes 
my chosen rila i relax my ankle my ankles are rila i relax my ka my calves relax i relax my knees my knees I relax my thighs my thighs relax I relax my groin my groin relax i relax my my arms are relax i relax my abdomen my abdomen I relax my chest my chest is relax I relax my shoulders my shoulders are relax i relax my neck my neck is relax i relax my face my face is relax i relax my my eyes relax relax my skull my skull is relaxed my whole body is relaxed i am
कृष्ण गोविंद गोपाल गात चलो नाम जपते चलो काम करते चलो याद आए को कभी ना कभी याद आएगी उनको कभी ना कभी कृष्ण दर्शन तो देंगे कभी ना कभी याद आई हन को अभी के अभी याद आई हन को अभी के अभी कृष्ण दर्शन तो देंगे अभी के अभी कृष्ण दर्शन तो देंगे अभी Very slowly move your fingers. Move your toes. Bring your feet together very slowly. Turn to your side very slowly. taking support of your hands slowly sit in sukhasan very slowly open your eyes when the session here thank you very much hari om tat sat jay gurudev